Hi everyone, I know you've been waiting a long time for this, so it's time for me to make one. So, time for another Mythbuster video. So this is the 39th video in this series, and we are going to be covering into specific details of the Formictopus genus and all the available species that are available in the hobby. So you probably th think right now that the most common one that you probably have seen is the Pecanceridae, the Haitian brown bird eater. But first, we should be able to appreciate where uh, these species come from. Uh, the Formictopus genus is native in the West Indies to Brazil. So these make them New World terrestrial species and they are able to flick urticating hair. Before I show you Isabella, which we all come to know and love. So like I do with all the other Mythbuster videos, we're going to go into depth of the common names the scientific names, how to pronounce them, where you can buy them, the cost and whatnot, uh, the sizes, the mature males, the females, growth rates and lifespans. We'll look at some pictures on the internet to see what they look like. The enclosure setups and the care sheets, temperament, breeding. Um, the first time ever I'm going to include a bite report. If I can find them on arachnoboards I'll include it. And my personal recommendations. So in North America, there are six known species of Formictopus available in the hobby. The most common one being the P. concerides, titled the Haitian Brown Bird Eater, which is rather odd because the specimens are actually not from Haiti. Uh, they come from the West Indies to Brazil. Uh, the Formictopus Cubensis, which is the Cuban Gold or Cuban Brown, which is native to Cuba. The Formictopus Platus which is called the Caribbean Golden Gray, the Formictopus atrichromatis, which is the pink patch bird eater. There's one called the species purple and the P. antolensis, not to be confused with the Acanthoscur antolensis, uh, which we don't know the common names. So this is how we say the scientific names. We have Formictopus, not Formitopus. This one here, Cancerides. We say it like this, Cancerides. Cubensis, pretty easy name. Platus is Platus. Atrichromatus, just like your nonduchromatis, except we have atri and antolensis. So, as I said, they're New World terrestrials from the West Indies to Brazil. So, let's go to Tarantula Canada's website and see what they actually look like. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, atrichromatis first. Now this is a spiderling, very similar to uh, the P. concerides as a spiderling. Uh, they have an electric blue color to them and then as they start getting older they're going to get like a bronze and purplish color. Uh, this is the Atrivocratus female. <laughs> kind of looks familiar to Isabella, right? But that's what they look like as females. Uh, P. concerides spiderling. It looks so much different compared to the adults. There is the female. That's a mature male. They do have uh, tibial hooks as well as bulbous pedipalps. Uh, cubensis. This is a male. Female which actually is being sold right now at Tarantula Canada. They're selling this exact specimen for $150. It's also possibly sold as P. Aratus. And this is the species Purple, which is also available at Tarantula Canada for a whopping price of uh, $250. You can see there's a lot of purple on the specimen. And if you go to Spidey Goliath's website, if I can find, ah, there we go. This is what a platus looks like. 
female and the mature male. So they're not really sexually dimorphic, they look very similar, and you could probably see the hooks right over here. And uh, let me see if there's a plat uh, antelensis available. Uh, I usually go on this gallery site, it's actually pretty cool. Because it has almost every species available in the hobby. Uh, 229. Let's just go down here. And usually when people ask me to identify tarantulas, I look on this website to see if they can actually look like the same. Uh, Gramostolas, no, 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 Monosotropus. Uh, okay, we're almost going down. Did I pass it? No, okay, no, there we go. Alright, this is the Antelensis. That's a female. That's their adult form. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I guess... <coughs> Excuse me. I guess no mature male. Okay, so this species is available pretty much online. So, if you want to look at tarantula dealers, uh, if you're in the U.S., I recommend going to uh, Ken the Bug Guy, Kelly Swift Inverts, uh, netbug.net, uh, Jamie's Tarantulas. If you're in Canada, like I am, Tarantula Canada or Avery's Exotics is the best place to go. If you're in the U.K., I recommend virginiacheesman.co.uk, uh, the spider shop as well as worldwide arachnoboards form because that's where you'll be able to see uh, stuff for sale on their for sale and trade section. So generally uh, formictopus species are not that expensive especially as spiderlings but they can get very pricey as adults. Uh, for the peak inserities, at least here in Canada a half inch generally goes around to twenty five dollars uh, if you're looking at like Cubensis or Platus or Achichromatis, you're probably looking at a little bit more money, like between 35 to 50 dollars, just because uh, these species are a lot more rare to come by than European Cerides. Um, for a price of an adult female, uh, you're generally looking around anywhere between 100 to 150 dollars, maybe even to 175. It depends on the size and the female and the person who is selling it to you. So the size, the mature males, the females, the growth rate, and the lifespan. Wow, okay, so many different topics to cover in this one. Okay, so let's have a look at my female. Just to give you an idea of their growth rate. Uh, so here is Isabella, my Formictibus cancerides, the Haitian brown bird eater. That's my evil one. The spawn from hell, I call her. It looks like she might be in pre -mult. I'm not sure. So today's date is uh, the March 10th, 2012. Just to give you an appreciation how fast... Let's have a look at her again. You can see she's very bronze colored, especially when she's freshly molted, she has a lot of purple on the carapace. And I think that's why they really should be called the Haitian purple bird eater. Really exquisite looking species. Yeah, so as I said, uh, for the lifespan I'll probably share with you an earlier upload that I made uh, back more than three years ago. So. This is my video. This is just a reamped version of this one that I uploaded on April 4th of 2009. So that's almost uh, three years since I had the specimen. And that was her back th then. She was a three quarter inch specimen, and right now she is. Yeah, she likes to jump a lot. Formictibus species are a very large terrestrial and bulky species, with some specimens attaining a leg span of 8 to 9 inches. And that's pretty common for a species of this caliber. Males 
are slightly smaller, attaining a five to six inch leg span. Yeah, she's getting mad. And generally have a four to six year lifespan. Females like this can accept at least between 15 to 20 years, but these are a very fast growing species unlike the Brachypalma or Gramma Sola genus, so it probably won't live as long, but certainly a very beautiful species to look at. So now the enclosure setup and their care sheet. This is pretty much uh, what I have for now for a big juvie like herself. Uh, she is in a 6 liter shoebox enclosure that you can get from Canadian Tire or Walmart. So all I did was uh, make some air holes around the whole perimeter of the enclosure. I added like potting soil or you can use eco earth as substrate. Have a water dish as well as to have a cork bark for it to hide. Formative species are opportunistic burrowers, so uh, if you provide a lot of substrate, they can burrow. Right, Isabella? She doesn't think so. So the temperature that you should keep uh, these species at is the normal optimal temperature for any tarantula, 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Maybe you can even jump up to 82. Uh, humidity, uh, they like it between 80%. So make sure it's slightly moist. This substrate is a little bit dry, so I have to start watering uh, the teeth a little bit more. So temperament, well, I really shouldn't have to say this to you. Look at her right now. And this is why I actually put this on my blackboard as red shock, meaning that they're aggressive. So it's a species that I probably would not consider you attempting to handle. Yeah, you're mean. She's badass. All right. Let me close the cage. Just because we're done with her. Now, this is a new topic that I never covered in previous Mythbuster videos, except the previous one. And I'm probably going to start including him in more Mythbuster videos if I can find info on it. Is the bite reports? So, because they are a New World terrestrial species, uh, they're not going to be medically significant like your OBT or your Haplohelma lividum, but the species is something you probably don't want to handle, like I said, because they're aggressive, and you saw right away how aggressive my specimen is, and she is still in threat posture. Uh, these species generally range from a slight itchiness if you've been bitten by a two and a half inch spiderling and someone claimed to have slight crampness around the bite area and a couple of intense pain from their eight inch female. Here we go. Obvious immediate pain. Swelling a little pain and the next day around lunchtime, cramped up. Could make a fist, and then after there were no system 24 hours later. And yeah, it's about 8 inches, so that's pretty much um, the worst scenario it could do. But then again, specimens do vary, and especially the people that may or may not be sensitive to their uh, venom. So to conclude the video, I'll add to you my personal recommendations over uh, this species. Well, as you know, I had this specimen for 3 years, and this is the only formative species that I have and I'm probably going to get some more in the future, hopefully um, within the next spring import. So this is a species worth getting, you know, like these are really large terrestrial species that are very easy to take care of, but these are certainly not recommended for the beginners because they are very defensive to even aggressive. And as you see from my specimen, she can attack when she pleases. I use the term aggressive than defensive because a defensive tarantula will throw threat postures more than actually try to attack you. My specimen will attack me no matter what. And you can probably see the epigastric furrow underneath the abdomen. So she's a female. A very pretty one too. Hey, Isabella? <laughs> You're so lovable. You're so cute. And coincidentally, this is the only tarantula that's actually my most aggressive specimen. 
uh, next to my Pioranata, which says a lot, for sure. So, so I do hope you enjoyed this awesome Mythbuster video, everyone, and hope you like it. And the next Mythbuster video I'm going to be doing is going to be Brachypelma Revisited, since a lot of people want me to go over in depth of all the other species, like the Brachypelma Bomi, the B Classy, the Albiceps, and so forth. So, they're pretty much going to be very similar to the one I did on Mythbuster Video 2, where I covered in depth of the B. Smithy and B. in Video 10. So, but I guess it's worth updating.